What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about some it could only happen in Canada stories. Today, I thought it would be fun to take a look at this Reddit discussion where someone asked, what is the funniest it could only happen in Canada story that you have. So basically, these are true stories about some of the most Canadian things ever. And I wanted to take a look at some of the responses to this, starting with got hurt, went to the hospital, came home, no unexpected $20,000 bill waiting for me. Okay, we don't. Oh, uh, really? Really? This is how we're going to begin this? This is where we're going to start? This really cuts deep for us Americans, but it can't cut too deep because we cannot afford the medical bill that would go along with that injury. <laughs> um, I guess this is a very Canadian thing, but I don't know, actually. It could only happen in Canada. I don't know if that's true for this. There are other countries around the world that have like more universal systems of healthcare that are paid for with, with taxes and social programs. So this is certainly something that is unique to Canada, but also a couple other countries around the world, right? Not to take anything away, I'm still extremely jealous. This guy gets it. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this one kind of hurts. Uh, for Americans like me to hear, so let's just let's just move along. <laughs> so, some other it could only happen in Canada stories. I was two hours late to school because a moose <laughs> was blocking one of the roads, and my bus driver just had to wait it out. <laughs> now this is what I'm talking about. This is more what I expected, <laughs> but even I did not expect. Uh, school delay because of moose? Not even, like, because of snow or something. That's what happens here in the United States. It snows. Sometimes we have no idea what to do or how to handle it. There might be a delay. Um, but in Canada, <laughs> I doubt that snow stops you very much because Canadians are much more used to it. But maybe a, but a, but a moose? Really, like, literally a moose was standing in the road for two hours, and you just had to wait? Couldn't you, like, go a different way? <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little lost in thought here, <laughs> thinking about this. But this is definitely the most Canadian thing I've heard today. <laughs> Late to school because a moose was blocking the road. I wonder how many Canadians have actually experienced something like that, because I can guarantee you that does not happen <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> that would that would reinforce a lot of American stereotypes about Canada <laughs> where we think we think moose are everywhere in Canada and then I, I immediately read a story about moose causing traffic jams in Canada. What do you want from me? It's, <laughs> there it's the stories are true. Anyway, what else? It could only happen in Canada. Roommate came home after grocery shopping and was fervently uh, complaining about the fact that the store ran out of maple syrup he wanted to buy for the pancakes he was gonna make. <laughs> really? Oh, is this the most Canadian thing, though? Because, well, for one thing, if your roommate's coming home complaining about maple syrup, that is, that is very, very Canadian. Um, but the grocery store was out of maple syrup. That, really, can that happen in Canada? I would have thought you keep the supply, like, pretty regularly shelved in stores. My God. Um, he was upset about the pancakes he was going to make. <laughs> the fact that this sounds like a regular occurrence, where uh, this Canadian roommate goes to the store for maple syrup for his pancakes, <laughs> that is very Canadian. <laughs> Not impossible, to happen here in America. We do like to go buy, well, our version of really bad, generic, artificial syrup that might say maple syrup on it, but it's really just cornstarch and stuff. <laughs> so, I don't know. This, yeah, this is a pretty good one. Could only happen in Canada. Yeah. 
That sounds more like something that should not happen in Canada. Exactly. That's what I thought. This sounds unbelievable. Like, maple syrup out of supply at the grocery store in Canada? Really? Maybe because all the Canadians are buying it. M maybe there is some logic to this. Anyway, uh, what else do we have here? Once, because I didn't want to be rude and wake up my housemates... I slept outside in negative 26 degree weather? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this, uh, this could only happen in Canada. This is, <laughs> that's extremely Canadian of you. Because this sounds like you did it out of politeness? Courtesy. You wanted so badly not to be rude and wake up your housemates. That's very sweet of you. But my God. So you slept outside in negative 26? Negative 26, that's probably uh, Celsius. I don't even know how cold that is. <laughs> That'd be cold in Fahrenheit. Like, I feel like you'd be dead. Um, maybe Canadians uh, have, like, the unique ability to survive sleeping outside in the freezing cold weather. Only a Canadian could have survived this. Th is this true? This is a little extreme. This is like to your detriment. To like, th you need to take care of your own safety above other people's well being. Just being rude. Canadians won't be rude to such an extent that you're going to cause bodily harm in the freezing cold. I don't, that, that, it could only happen in Canada. I agree. Uh, what else? When Pokemon Go was popular, that's a, that's a phone game, a Pokemon phone game, uh, I was supposed to be meeting my friend near an in-game place of interest. I got there before he did. When I saw his car pull into the driveway, I walked over and I got into their passenger seat, only to find that I was in the wrong car. This person went and, like, sat down in someone else's car. Like, Ugh, ugh. I, I don't even want to think about if you did that in the United States. There would be serious trouble. The guy who was driving the car I got into was super chill. And we ended up playing with him, uh, like the game, for the next hour, uh, having a good time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is so different to how it would go down. If this happened in, in America, like, if you went and sat down in someone's car, I would be scared, like, there's a possibility that that person could have a permit to carry a gun in their car. They, they could, like, shoot you, at worst. At best, scream at you and <laughs> shove you out of the car. Certainly not um, act super chill and end up playing the video game with you. That's insane to me, in the best way possible. Like, yeah, it could only happen in Canada. That's a, that's a great one. It would not go down like that in America. Oh my God. We also just like, in general, I think, don't have much of a, as much of a trust for each other. So if someone accidentally got into my car, I, I, like, by nature, I wouldn't even really give them the benefit of the doubt. I would I would more likely be inclined to be like, this person's trying to rob me. I need to do something. Um, thank God <laughs> for Canadians um, being a little more understanding. And even making new friends. In Canada, you can make friends by stepping into, into people's cars. <laughs> That's the difference. Oh, my God. I've been told a number of times, if this were in the U.S., I would have been shot. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, not everyone in the U.S. I mean, most people in the U.S. don't have a gun in their car. It's, it's just a possibility. It's total luck of the draw who you, whose car you end up in. But uh, I, I'm more likely to say it's possible if this were in the U.S., you would have been shot. And uh, it's funny, thinking about the law, like, in certain states, it might be within their right to shoot you, depending on what state you're in, if you're in, like, Texas or something. Anyway, <laughs> what else? It could only happen in Canada. Part of downtown Ottawa had to be avoided and was shut down, as there was, on two occasions, a lost bear. 
<laughs> What's all these crazy animal stories? Uh, there's a lost bear wandering around and a moose on the loose. <laughs> there's a rhyme. There's a, there's a chance for this. Moose on the loose. Moose on the loose. <laughs> That's what people need to chant in Canada because apparently this happens so often. What the heck? Only in Canada. Lost bears, lost moose, wandering around. Uh, so this was in Ottawa. Places having to be shut down. This is the second story about a moose shutting down traffic. Most Canadian thing ever. They apparently followed the water from the Quebec side. Also, turkeys. <laughs> trying to hitch a free ride from OC Transpo. Is that like public transport? Like turkeys trying to get on the public transport? That's funny. <laughs> are there are there turkeys wandering around in Canada? I think there's certain parts of the United States where you can find turkeys. People like hunt them. I don't know if they actually walk into like traffic and stuff or <laughs> Are there Canadian turkeys? I've never heard that before. Okay. Uh what are some more <laughs> It could only happen in Canada stories. These are really funny. <laughs> Driving to my buddy's cottage. We were all 18 or 19. The boys in the back got into the beer on the road. Beer. Okay, so uh, don't worry. Our driver was 100% sober. We were dumb, but not that dumb. So they're drinking while driving to a cottage. Um, and in Canada, what's the drinking age? Like 19? So it, it was legal for them. Um, they got it. They're drinking, but the driver was sober. When we stopped for gas, people noticed we were a bit tipsy. So when we got back on the road, the RCMP, isn't that like a like Mountie, like mounted police, pulled us over. They tested the driver and found he was sober, but they confiscated our beer. Okay. The cops leaned into the car and said, Christ, boys. Smells like an effing brewery in here. <laughs> oh my god. Here, how are me and the boys supposed to finish all your beers back at the station? Wait, what? <laughs> the, the, Canadian piece, the Canadian police took confiscated the beer. Now they're joking about uh, drinking it uh, on their own time? Lost a few dozen beers and a $300 open alcohol ticket. It was worth it for the story. This Mountie said, it smells like a brewery in here. How are me and the boys going to finish all your beer at the station? The, the Mountie actually said that to you? Oh my God. I mean, that's funny. That's funny. But at the same time, it's like, hey, that's our, like, you're taking our beer. Like, that's expensive. And now you're joking about going and drinking it, presumably on the job yourself and you're giving me a ticket for breaking the law here. This, uh, I have some grievances with this story, but at the same time, it's also very funny. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is this a it could only happen in Canada story? I don't know. This could happen in the United States, I think. I think American cops would be more than happy to take your beer and go drink it, actually. <laughs> the, the fact that the Canadian police are kind of joking about it is kind of the funny, that's the more Canadian aspect of this. That's kind of wholesome, funny, <laughs> even if they took the beer. Uh, let's keep going. A long time ago, 1989, I owned a taxi in a city north of Toronto. I went on vacation to the Bahamas for three weeks, and when I got back, I went to the taxi company office, which was located in a small house on a side street I walked into the house and realized that it was no longer the company office. So he went to his taxi company office. After returning from three weeks of vacation, he realized walking in, it's not the company office anymore. I was, I was standing in someone's living room? This is like the uh, other story where that guy uh, stepped into someone's car and became best friends somehow by the end of it. He walked into someone's living room. The company had moved to another location. While I was out of the country, I, I apologized to the lady. It, it sounds like nothing bad happened. I wish there was some more detail here. He just apologized. Oh, sorry. Or, or he'd be like, oh, sorry. Sorry for stepping into your home. 
Um, if that if it had literally been a company office three weeks ago, I want to say that most people would be understanding. But again, the difference is here in the United States, you're walking into someone's home, they're even more likely to have a firearm in their their home. Uh, it'd be scary if you did this in America. Genuinely scary. Um, much scarier than going into someone's car, which is scary in America. In Canada, it's just like, whatever. You're like, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and they're like, oh, don't you want to stay and have dinner while you're here? <laughs> uh, one day last year, my city was measured to be the coldest place on earth. Is there a city in Canada that could be measured the coldest place on earth? That's already, oh, that oh, could only happen in Canada story. Uh, it was colder than the average temperature of Mars? <laughs> when I checked the time associated with the measurement, I realized that at the time, I was just at the bus stop with t-shirt and jeans. My coat was undone, no hat or gloves. I literally didn't realize it was colder than any other regular winter morning. Are you freaking kidding me? Canadians are just built different. Canadians are different. Like, showing up to the bus stop, <laughs> t-shirt, jeans, uh, coat unbuttoned, no hat, no gloves. It's already winter. This is just how this Canadian dresses during the winter, which is already disturbing to me. Uh, but also, they didn't even realize until they checked the news that was the coldest day... <laughs> That was the coldest place on Earth for the year? Is that possible? Like, if you're including everywhere, like even Antarctica, is that really possible? Either way, apparently Canadians can just stand in the middle of the North Pole in a t-shirt and shorts, and it's fine. <laughs> but I, I get the idea. This Canadian didn't even realize, like, it was colder. Like, it's already freezing, usually, and it doesn't bother them. And it was way, way colder. It didn't matter. <laughs> That would be kind of shocking, like you're you're Canadian and and you you realize you're like you have superpowers. You wait, you're standing in a block of ice and you're like, I don't even feel this anymore. <laughs> Let's take a look at another here. Uh, my friend, uh, just to clarify, we both live in the middle of a metropolitan city. Has a protection policy on his house that covers damage done by wild animals because their fence and backyard. Got trashed by a moose once. You're never safe from the moose. They're always watching. What? Hey, wait. Really? Are they always watching? Is there a moose in here? Is there a moose watching this? If you are, thank you. <laughs> but seriously, um, this person has like a insurance policy on their house to cover moose damage. <laughs> Is that a thing in Canada? I mean, th three of these stories have to do with moose. Uh, I think that's a good spot to end this, actually. Uh, that was the most Canadian stuff I've heard in a while. These did not disappoint. I thought it'd be really funny to check out some stories. That could only happen in Canada, and my God, it's true. Um, uh, Canadians are a unique <laughs> species, a unique people in the best way possible. These were fantastic. So anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment uh, with your thoughts or any of your own personal, it could only happen in Canada stories. That'd be very funny to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.